Well, hey guys, happy March 1st. In today's video, get excited. I'm gonna be sharing with you all of my favorites and one fail from the month of February. You guys really seem to enjoy these videos and I have them all saved in a playlist if you wanna binge away at stuff I loved in prior months. Yesterday, I put out a video on sunscreens you need to try and this month, I've been trying out some sunscreens that were definite wins, especially these new sunscreens from Useron. This is the age defense one I personally have been really enjoying. SPF 50, this is a chemical sunscreen, there's no cast. And I have been so ecstatic that this does not run into my eyes and cause blurry vision. I have not had that with an American chemical sunscreen in a while. I mean, it's hard to find them. It's, it's very moisturizing, not drying, it's not greasy or shiny on the skin. However, it's not water resistant, so I don't recommend relying on this if you're gonna be outdoors for a prolonged period of time, participating in sports, sweating a lot, or doing any water-based activities. But for an everyday moisturizer with SPF 50, this is a great option. Also has some compounds from licorice root, which are anti-inflammatory and may help with redness, hyperpigmentation. It has sodium ascorbyl phosphate, a form of vitamin C that actually has been shown in some small studies to potentially be helpful for diminishing the number of acne lesions. So if you've got acne prone skin, I think this would be a good choice. And it has vitamin E, another topical antioxidant. So these antioxidants may help in minimizing oxidative stress upon exposure to UV. You can get it at Target, $13.99 I think it is, for two and a half ounces. They also make the oil control one, which I reviewed for you guys in yesterday's video. So if you missed that, check it out. I also like that one. But overall, I prefer the consistency of this. Oh, one other thing, no niacinamide. So if you are sensitive to niacinamide, it's becoming increasingly challenging to find any skincare products, hair care products. Pretty soon Mrs. Myers is gonna be putting niacinamide in her countertop spray. It's getting, getting harder and harder to find niacinamide free things if you're sensitive. Speaking of niacinamide containing sunscreens, this one I have been loving does have niacinamide. It is by Undefined Beauty. There are in our sun serum SPF 50. This is a mineral sunscreen that is tinted, blends onto the skin well. It gives the skin a nice hydrated glow without being greasy or shiny. It doesn't pill or roll up off of the skin. It's water resistant, so if I didn't already mention that, so you could rely on this if you're gonna be outside for a prolonged period of time. It's mineral, so there's no issue with it burning or stinging around the eyes. Now, as far as the tint, um, I'm pretty impressed with the tint for me personally because sometimes tinted mineral sunscreens, they can be too orangey. They can almost have the terracotta pot look to them. This is not that way. It is a peachier brown, but it really, for me, blends in very sheer on the surface of the skin. Now, if you have a deeper skin tone, I suspect this likely will still leave a cast. And I'm hoping that in the future they come out with more shades. Now this also has um, tremella in it, which is a mushroom extract that helps with moisture retention. It has niacinamide, I already mentioned that, which for those of you like myself who are not bothered by niacinamide, it's a great ingredient. It helps calm down redness. It's helpful for hyperpigmentation. It's helpful for the moisture barrier. This is free of fragrance but it does have a little bit of a scent. It smells exactly like the Color Science Sun Forgettable Face Shield. It's not a sunscreen smell. I know a lot of people don't care for that, but it's just like a little aroma. So be aware of that. If you've tried Color Science and you hated it because of that odor, then you're not gonna like this. If you tried Color Science and you hated it, you're not gonna like this either. It's actually kind of quite similar to this Color Science Sun Forgettable Face Shield. All right, so those are the sunscreens that I loved this month. I was ecstatic over these Eucerin ones because I was, you know, I've always made the statement that Eucerin does not make a bad product. And so when I saw they came out with American sunscreens, I was like, oh gosh, please do not burn and sting around the eyes because that always happens. And then I'll have to say, this is not a product I can tolerate. Um, but these have been a win. Speaking of use and sunscreens, they, I also saw on their website, I haven't seen it anywhere in stores, they came out with a mineral, a new mineral sunscreen. And I think they came out with a mineral sunscreen that they're marketing for kids. I could be wrong on that, but they do have a new mineral sunscreen. Let me know if you've seen it in your area. I have seen it nowhere, but I will keep my eyes peeled. A skincare fail for me is this Juno Skin Clean 10 Cleansing Balm. 
This, y'all know I love cleansing balms. Kept seeing this suggested to me every time I logged into Amazon, there'd be somebody doing one of those Amazon live shopping events, which I have to look away from because I love the home shopping network. And so those Amazon lives are kind of like that. I, I get sucked into those. I just find them like very relaxing to have one in the background, but they can be, you know, pretty soon you end up with a cart full of like pantry organizing staples or something. Anyways, they kept showing me this Juno skin cleansing balm. I love cleansing balms. I was really excited to use it. But the citrus oil in this, I think is what is causing some problems for me because it really burns around the eyes. I find that my eyes are red after I finish using it. And I also find that it's almost kind of a little irritating to my skin. The smell is quite strong and it's not particularly good at removing mascara. I found that to be the case. Like oftentimes, you know, I do a double cleanse, but oftentimes when I get out of the shower, I still have mascara residue left behind after using this, which is never the case with other cleansing balms. And I've never really had a cleansing balm fail. And I've been using it regardless because I'm stubborn like that when I, you know, I, I try and use products in their entirety. So I keep suffering on with it, but I don't recommend it because I think the citrus oil is just too much. It is a softer cleansing balm. It's not stiff. Some cleansing balms, you, you know, they're pretty stiff and they want you to work it up or whatever. It's like, I don't have time for that. So I will say this does glide onto the skin quite nicely. It's soft, which I like. Cleansing balms are a personal preference. They're not necessary. I always get questions like, do I have to use this? Do I have to use that? No, you don't have to. But if you wear a lot of makeup, co cosmetics, or you wear water resistant sunscreen, you may find that using a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil prior to a gentle cleanser will help remove those products more efficiently with less rubbing and less irritation. This is a Korean moisturizer that I've really been loving, Zeroid rich enic cream urea 5%. Now this brand has a gel moisturizer called Dermartlogy that I love. It was featured in my favorite gel moisturizers video I did a long time ago. I got this one on Amazon, but I think it then sold out. Let me know if you were able to get it because I talked about this in my urea for the face video. But I have been loving this. 5% urea, which is helpful for softening like keratosis pilaris. Urea is hygroscopic, so it helps improve moisture retention in the skin. This also has uh, centella compounds, compounds from centella, which may be helpful for healing and barrier recovery. It's free of fragrance. You can use it on the face, the neck. You may wonder about other urea products. Urea at higher percentages can burn and sting a lot and be too irritating for the face. 5% is typically well tolerated on the face. Now in the US, this is a Korean brand, but in the US, a lot of products with urea in them for the face, it'll be labeled on the ingredients, hydroxyethyl urea. Like the Ordinary's natural moisturizing factor moisturizer has that in it, I believe. And that's a great product, pretty affordable. So yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily need to, to get this one if you wanna try a urea face cream, face moisturizer. Hair care product that I have been really happy with is by this Kamatis. This is a zinc pyrithione dandruff shampoo. If you're not familiar, zinc pyrithione is great for dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, both on the scalp as well as the face. And it's what is in head and, sh you know, head and shoulders. Although head and shoulders has a lot of newer shampoos with different active dandruff ingredients. Like they have one with selenium sulfide anyways. But the head and shoulders shampoos, they have methyl isothiazolinone in it. Now that's a preservative people commonly can be allergic to. It's, it's actually a pretty common skin allergen. And so I was excited to see this because it doesn't have that. And it also has another good dandruff ingredient, salicylic acid. Anyways, as far as a dandruff shampoo, this has not left my hair brittle or unmanageable. Now I of course do use conditioner afterwards, which I do recommend using conditioner after shampooing. It'll just help your hair be more manageable, especially if you have long hair, textured hair. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's helpful. I mean, people with really short hair can get away with not doing that. But if, once you have yet longer hair or you know more textured hair, it becomes very unmanageable if you don't use conditioner. Uh, because when you cleanse, it leaves a charge behind on the hair strands and makes them prone to tangling. So the conditioner helps neutralize that. Um, regardless of conditioner, I do find that many anti-dandruff shampoos can leave the hair kind of dull, lifeless. This has not been the case with the shampoo. I rather enjoy it. Now it does have fragrance in it. It's kind of a slightly powdery, light 
perfume. It's nice, it's not heavy, and I recommend it if you are in the market for a shampoo. I know a lot of people are always seeking out shampoos. All right, so those are the products from this month that were hits and the one fail. But lifestyle-wise, I read this book, Dope Sick. I bought it at Barnes & Noble because it was on one of those shelves where it's like, this is what the employees recommend, and I don't know. That's just where I saw it, I guess. Dope Sick, it is about the opioid epidemic. This was a pretty good book, but it was not as enthralling as I was hoping it would be. It was a little dry in some of the writing and it went into too much boring detail about some of the legal proceedings and just parts of the story that I was like, I don't care so much about this. Let's get back to the addicts and their families and everything like that's really what I wanna hear about. She does get into that, but you kinda of have to be patient through the book. It's a pretty quick read, but it is the basis for a show on Hulu that you guys have recommended, the Dope Sick series. You said that that was much better than this book. So I don't have Hulu, but I really wanna see it now because yeah, I have always been kind of fascinated with stories of addiction. This could happen to anyone. Of course, you know, there are genes and things likely that, you know, maybe predispose people to it. These compounds are so intensely addictive that it really can happen to anyone. I mean, it's not, some people still hold this false fixed belief that these addictions and things, you know, it's some sort of a character flaw. But truthfully, people need to understand that this can happen to you. This can happen to you. And it has nothing to do with any kind of moral or, you know, personality or character flaw. I think it boils down to being in a, you know, a vulnerable position at the wrong time around the wrong people. And as this book illustrates, in some cases, it's something as simple as just you having an accident getting a prescription and boom all of a sudden you become addicted yeah it was it's really you know eye-opening if you have that belief that people go down this path because of their choices but you can see in this book how easily it can happen to anyone um and that these compounds they are so deadly addictive and life-threatening overall like i said the book was a little dull a little dry in parts for me but it was pretty it was a pretty quick read i noticed at the end i think they recommended some other books on this topic so i may have to check those out what else did they recommend beth macy's recommended reading that's the author drug dealer md how doctors were duped patients got hooked and why it's so hard to stop that looked like a good one i may have to read or or audio read i didn't watch too much on Amazon Prime this month, but I did come across the Lorena Bobbitt miniseries. I'm actually on episode two of it. I think it's like a four part series. And so far that is good because it actually has the real people. And I remember when that was happening, I just felt like the media was very juvenile and how they handled that based on you know the nature of the crime that she committed. It's like, okay, we get it. She did that, grow up. Like, what are the what are the facts here? And I felt like at the time we never really got that. Or, you know, maybe it was later revealed, but back then, you know, we weren't really always on media. <laughs> you watched the news came on and then it went off, and you know, that was kind of about it. And then you had the newspaper that people read. But now we are constantly being bombarded with all of this media all the time. And so it, it just would just have been handled much differently now that we have Twitter and all of these other things where people can put out their opinions on things and you know influence how we think about things. But so far it's good. Um, it's a little, it, they drag it out a bit much, but it's still pretty entertaining. So I do suggest watching that if you are at all interested in. I am not someone who really likes true crime, which I guess is what the category of this would be. The reason I don't like it is because I find that a lot of true crime is about like some horrific killer or something and I, that scares me. But this intermarital struggle is interesting and you know, it's not like um, somebody's gonna come and attack me that way. So I, you know, I, I'm able to handle listening to that. But yeah, I cannot, I can't watch like true crime stuff about people being, you know, killed or abducted or anything like that, I can't. It just, it just keeps me up too late 
scared. <laughs> I'm not afraid of like paranormal stuff, aliens, all those things. I'm like, whatever. But real people, that is what is terrifying to me. So that is the media that I consume this month. Not a whole lot. Now, one thing that I've been loving this month, it's not like a, anything to buy, woohoo. I mean, hello, we, with inflation, that's probably music to your ears. But this little habit I've been employing, I always go for a run or do some kind of workout at night, and then I usually just hop right in the shower, but I've been taking 10 to 20 minutes to just quickly spot clean an area, and it has made a huge difference in just keeping my overall space much cleaner. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be spring soon, so maybe you're into spring cleaning, but the idea of it is very overwhelming, but you know you need to do it. Just with this like little 10 to 20 minute timer hack, you can start to really clean, keep your space clean. Like I've been doing it and I've just found that overall, like I don't find that I look over and I'm going, oh God, I really need to dust that, which happens a lot. You know, I get negligent in, in certain things and all of a sudden I look over and the windowsill is like caked in dust. I like to structure around little time increments. I do well with the timer method. Yeah, so the quick cleaning burst method has really been working out for me. And I think you could easily do this for anything else in your life that you don't necessarily enjoy doing. If it's decluttering, for example, that is another thing. Like say you have some area that is complete chaos and it's very overwhelming to think about tackling it. If you spend 10 to 20 minutes a night doing it, probably by the end, mid to the end of the week, it's, it's pretty much taken care of if you just do it that way. Something you wanna accomplish that you're not necessarily keen on doing, this method is a good way to, to tackle it in an incremental fashion. Anyways, you guys, that was my month. It went by quickly, but is it Fe February is the shortest month of the year, so there you go. And March is here, so get excited for that. And you're watching this, it's Fat Tuesday, so I'll let the good times roll. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.